Hi there, welcome to the Dev All. I am Roman and this is the beginning of a new video series that is called Event Sourcing Do It Yourself. I haven't done any videos for quite some time now and the reason is not only that I have four and a half year old twin girls and a wife in teacher's practice or in German Referendariat, but also that I have given two talks at two different conferences. The one was about marrying event sourcing with the Almish architecture at FableConf. And the other one was about this exact topic here, event sourcing, do it yourself. And I did this at the awesome Kandinsky conference in October in Berlin. In this video series, we are basically talking about the same topics, event sourcing, do it yourself, but we go much deeper in there. So we actually building an event source program together. And I hope that in the end of the sixth episode, you have an idea how to actually start building a prototype for an event sourced system. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it and los geht's. So let's start with the overview, what you can expect from this video series. So this video here is more an overview and the motivational part behind the whole thing. And from the next video on, we are actually diving right into the code and building our first event source application prototype. We start with a, a short recap what event sourcing actually is and why I think that it is pretty useful. And then I will give you my motivation why I think it is also pretty useful not to use a framework just from or right from the start, but to actually build it on your own. And in order to be able to build this on our own, we need a domain. And this is what I'm going to introduce then. And then we will go on with all the topics that we need for building an event source system in here. So we will talk about the events and event store. We will talk about projections. We will talk about the behavior or the business logic of our system. And then we will have a video about testing. And in the end, we will have a video about event streams and different aggregates. So let's start with a recap what event sourcing actually is. The whole idea of event sourcing is built on one specific notion, which is that domain events are fundamental to build business processes. So what is a domain event? A domain event is something that has happened in the business that is important for the business. And if you think in states, so you have an application that has different states or you have a business that is in different states. An event actually describes the transition from one state to another. And with the help of those domain events, we are actually able to model most of our business cases, if not all of the cases of a business application. And if we accept this, that domain events are fundamental for those business processes, it must be pretty nice then if we could actually use those events to model our software or to model, first of all, the domain that we actually want to build a software for. And if we have then uh, modeled our domain with domain events, we can then actually have a software that uses those domain events or those modeled events as the fundament or the basis for our new software. And the thing now that sets event sourcing apart from classical ORM or database applications is that we are not going to store the state of our application. What we are going to store is only the events that happened in our system. And when we have done this, we will actually never ever delete those events again. So we will have a whole history of the whole system, what has actually happened in our system. And this is pretty cool. And that's pretty much the fundamental or the foundation of event sourcing. So when we are actually only storing the events of our application and not the state of the application, what do we win? What can we save with, with this kind of applications that we couldn't save or store without these applications? And the answer is, the intent of the user, the intent of the business. We can actually know why something happened. So if you have a look at this normal database query, update the customer's table and set the street to Baker Street. Why did this happen in the business? Do we know this? 
No, because we have no clue about the intent. It could happen because the customer actually moved or it could have happened because the address was wrong in the system and we needed to correct it. But I think that knowing this intent makes a pretty big difference because in the first case, when the customer had just moved, we might send them a voucher for, for getting some reduced prices in a, in a new city or in a new area of the city. But if the address was just corrected, we, we don't need to do anything in this regard. So if we scratch this actually and we use events for this, we can make the intent of the business explicit. So instead of just having a database update, we can have two different events. So we can either have the customer moved event with the payload of the new street in this case or the new address, or we could have the address was corrected event. And so we have stored the actual intent of the user and not just updated some field in some database table. So all in all, I think that event sourcing is awesome. And I think that there are many reasons for this. So the first reason that I like to talk about is that we do not have a database scheme and we do not have database migration. So if we have done everything correctly, we only have events that are actually happening in the domain. So we do not have a structural data model because a structural data model always has some shortcomings in there because we might need to optimize for some queries or we, we want to need some normal forms in there. And so we might just lose information because we just have a structural model in there and we do not have covered the actual intent of the business. And if the business decides to actually upgrade the system or migrate the system to a different system, there's one thing that normally the business wants to take with it, which is the data. So normally we don't want to lose the last 10 or 15 or 20 years of data. But if we choose or if we switch from one structural model to another structural model, there is no way but to lose some kind of information. The second big point for me is that we do not have the a loss of information due to destructive actions. So what is a destructive action in a normal database scheme? Of course, it's in delete action. So delete from table. It's a truncate tra table action. But it's also an update action, what we've just seen. But it's also, if you think about it, an insert is also losing information. And I might repeat myself here, but what we are losing is the actual intent of the business. We do not know why something was inserted in the database. The next point is that we do not need to actually map our objects to tables. So we don't need to use some magical ORM that is doing everything for us. This is just not needed anymore. If we use event sourcing, we can just project into any kind of data structure we like to. And this is pretty cool because in my opinion, most of the ORMs start to look pretty nice when we are actually starting to use them. But later on, a lot of them shoot yourself or you shoot yourself into the foot with them, in my opinion. Another thing I really like about event sourcing is that it's actually possible to have a different interpretation of the past. So if the business comes to us and actually asks us or wants to have a new report based on the data, what we can actually do is we can write this new report. We can just write a new projection but we already have the whole history of the business stored in our event store. So what we can actually do is we can actually project the whole history into this new report and we do not need to start just from now on when we have just implemented something new. So if you have a normal database, you can't just do this because you don't know about the past. And if there are some new requirements from your business, you just need to start for just from scratch now. Connected to this, there is the notion of what if scenarios. With an event source system, it's actually pretty easy to build what if scenarios. That means we can actually just check how would my system look like if we had potentially, if we potentially had this and those events in my system. We can project 
into a new view and can just have a look at it, but we don't need to actually change the state of our database. Think of how you could actually do this in a relational database. You are going to plan a conference, for example, and you just want to see how my schedule would look like if I put this speaker in that room and this speaker in that room. How would you actually do this when you have a relational database? You need to build a lot of logic for this. With an event source system, we can just pretend some events to be there, run some projections over it, and we just get the whole information out of it. If you think this is a nice topic, you can watch my domain-driven UI talk from FableConf. It's also online on YouTube, where I go much deeper into this topic. The last point I want to mention here is that we are actually able to optimize our read and write, so we can actually go full-blown CQRS, which means that we have a read model and a write model, and we can optimize our reads pretty easily because we can just project into the view that we actually need, or if you're using a relational database, into a table that we actually need. And in the end, we can just select star from table. We do not need to use any joins or any complicated queries. So if you also think that this is pretty cool and these are nice features of event sourcing, we can actually start implementing them. And you might think that is hard. And Greg Young, one of the biggest proponent of event sourcing in the last 10 years, said that event sourcing is easy. The only thing you actually need to learn is a function from a state and an event to a state. This sounds a bit strange in the beginning, but if we are a bit deeper into the topic, you will see that he's basically right. Jeremy is also telling us about that we have a function from a state to a command to an event, but this was full-blown CQRS message-based system then, and we're not going to talk about this in this video series for now. But maybe you have read some things about event sourcing and you have seen a lot of problems that might occur when you're using event sourcing. And you might be a bit scared to actually do this. But now you, you look around, you Google a bit around, and you see that there are a couple of frameworks for the rescue. So, for example, I just read it here. You have the Axon framework, which is a framework for scalable high-performance application. You have for PHP the proof components, which are the proof enterprise-ready SUKRS and event source packages for PHP, whatever, whatever. You have VulkanKit for JavaScript and Node.js. And these look pretty nice, and I think most of them are actually pretty nice and pretty cool, so I don't want to pick on any framework here. I worked with some of them, and I really like them. But I think those frameworks have a problem. And the problem is that they actually promise you to be production ready. They promise you to be enterprise ready. They promise you to actually work out of the box, and you can just start to use them when you're just starting with event sourcing and everything will work fine. But in my opinion, this is a false promise. So because like every new architectural style, event sourcing actually needs a different way of thinking. It, it needs a different way of development. It needs a different way of modeling your stuff. And so in my opinion, it's not so good just to start with the framework because you, you will make your mistakes and it's, it's much better if you actually make them not in a production system. So I think it's much better if we are just prototyping in the beginning. So for example, Matthias said, or actually Eric Evans said, I read this again here, production code is the most expensive code you can write. Most teams only ever write production code and don't prototype. Then you cannot experiment efficiently. And this is what I'm talking about here. If you believe the promise that you can actually just start with event sourcing and everything will work out fine, you will make mistakes and you will shoot yourself in the foot again. But the problem is that you will recognize this much later on. So, and one of the, the reasons for this is that those frameworks give you solutions for problems you don't understand. So if you have a, a great solution for a problem that you don't understand, you actually have made yourself a much bigger, bigger problem, in my opinion. And that is why I think the best way to actually work with such a new architectural style is that you actually prototype. 
that you just try it out, try it out on your own, actually understand what the problems in these domains are and what the solutions are actually good for. And then tailor them to your needs. Ask why. Ask why should I do this? Why do I need this? Do I really need this fancy new notification feature in there? And then throw it away. And then repeat. And then repeat. And I think in the end, iteration and refinement will produce quality. And this is pretty important for me. I am not giving you any production-ready code in here. I just want to give you the help to actually start your own process of learning things. And if you have learned a lot later on, you can then use all the frameworks you want, in my opinion. So if we want to build an event source system, what do we actually need for this? I've put a list on here on topics that you can read about when you are working with event source systems. So we have events, an event store, projections, read models, subscriptions, notifications, CQRS, versioning, sagas, event streams, read model caching we need to think about. We need to think maybe about snapshots because event sourcing might get pretty slow if you have big aggregates. We need to think about event store caching. We need to think about distributed systems and message-based systems and so on and so on. And I think just to start, this is not true. So what we actually need to start with event sourcing is one thing, events. And the one goal of event sourcing is to actually store the events forever so we never touch the the actual event stream so what we also need to start with event sourcing is an event store and this is what we're actually going to start with in the next episode of this sixth episode video series so i hope that you can join me in there if you have any questions feel free to contact me Subscribe to my channel, hit the notification button to, to get all the new videos about this series. I hope that you like it. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye.